and welcome to Sparger Yarncrafts. My name is Will Sparger. I am your host. Today is episode 53, part one of my works in progress. Um, so for those of you who are new, uh, a couple things real quick. All of my social links and my shop links and everything are in the video description box below. Uh, you can find my Facebook, my Instagram, my Ravelry, all of that stuff is down there. Also, if you haven't been to the podcast in a little while, I know that I've been kind of infrequent with videos, which I'm hoping will change, and that is hopefully because of this new schedule that a lot of people seem to like, and the new schedule is that I'm going to be posting shorter videos on a more frequent basis instead of the long podcasts. I do know that a lot of podcasters post these long episodes and people do like to sit and watch them, um, but I know personally it's easier for me to film short shorter segments, and I do know that a lot of people watch these on their breaks or uh, when they're having you know, shorter bouts of time and that the shorter episodes fit into their schedule a little bit better. And uh, that also gives me a little bit more time to kind of work on things. And if there's a project that's like so close to being finished, I can, you know, spend an extra day getting it done so that I have something to show for finished objects. But uh, new schedule is Monday, works in progress. Tuesday is finished objects if I have any. Wednesdays is going to be shop updates if I have any. Thursdays and, well, Wednesdays and Thursdays are kind of going to be toss-ups between like tutorials, my knit crate videos, um, if we do, ha if we have some kind of make-along, anything like that, maybe even reviews and stuff, that's all going to fit into Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday will be life updates if I have any. I think this also allows people who only want to see certain things, they only have to watch certain videos, they don't have to keep skipping through a video to find the things that they want to see. I think this is just a little bit more accessible for everyone. So that's the new schedule if you haven't been here in a while. Um, and that's what we're going with. So today is part one. I'm going to show you my works in progress. I have four to show you that are a little bit different than last week's. Um, Actually, I don't know. I think maybe only one or one or two of these you've seen already. And the first one I'm going to start with is actually one that I've been having on hold for a while. And I don't know, I don't actually remember the last time I showed this project. Uh, so this is Tangled, uh, of course. Uh, this is a sock. Uh, this is, I have turned the heel, I turned the heel actually a long time ago, uh, and I'm working my way up the foot. They are toe up. This is using Skano, Skano Cordell Sock Yarn in the colorway La Traviata. Um, so, Skano Yarns. I actually really like their yarn, and I know April and her husband, they are very, very nice people. I really like working with them. Uh, this is 435 yards um, for 113 grams. It is 100% Cordale wool, and it is superwash. Um, so that's this. It's actually kind of a thinner fingering weight than I'm used to using, so the yarn goes a little bit further. Um, but this is, this is the colorway. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm actually really sad that I haven't picked this up in a long time. So I'm going to I'm going to go back and work on it. Uh heel is a German short row heel and I'm knitting this on I don't know. Uh US 2s, which is a 2.75 millimeter and I am doing magic loop. I know a lot of people call this the devil's loop, but it just clicked for me one day and uh, I'm actually really happy with being able to do magic loop on these. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna continue until this reaches about 40 or 55 grams, then I'll do my ribbing and bind off, and then I'll start the second one. So these will be pr pretty tall. I am probably gonna have to do some increases somewhere up there uh, to fit around my adult male calves. So um, that's that's a work in progress. I haven't actually knit on it since the last time I showed it. It's just been a really long time since I've shown it, and I was going through all my project bags to see what projects I still have on the needles, and this is one that I had found. So now that I found it, I'm going to try and remember to work on it. <laughs> try. Uh, okay. So the second work in progress will be um, one that you've seen from last week. Oops. This is the asymmetrical, I call them BS shawls because I, 
I'm just BSing it as I go. I'm just like, oh, this stitch pattern feels like something I could add in here. And this is, uh, the cast on is down here and it goes this direction. This is a worsted weight. I'm knitting this on an old, um, an old dye iteration of Echoes of the Mojave that I actually didn't end up liking this version of it. So I've revamped it for my shop. Um, but that's what this colorway is. It is worsted. It's a hundred super, hundred percent superwash merino. I'm knitting this on US sixes, I think. US sixes are 4.0 millimeter. Um, and I'm just kind of throwing whatever in there. I've, I've got garter. I've got stockinette. I've got some three by two ribbing. There's, uh, there's that lace pattern, just kind of some simple eyelets. And then up on this section, I tried out some bobbles. I don't know how well that's going to show because the yarn, of course, um, but I did, I did some bobbles just on that bottom corner, like on that bottom edge. I didn't want to do any more than that. So I put it there. And the next one I'm doing is kind of a slip stitch pattern. Um, I actually haven't knit enough rows for you to actually be able to see the pattern, but that's, that's the next little bit I'm working on and I'm getting close to the end of this ball. So the next one I'm going to throw in there is this one, which is coming apart very quickly. But this is the next yarn I'm going to use. I believe this is Nitpick Stroll yarn. I think this is a skein somebody gave me because they were going to try and try out dyeing and they ended up not liking dyeing. Wait, I think this came from... Kathy, is this yours? Kathy, I think this is one of the ones you sent me. Um, I don't think... Yeah, I think this is one of the ones you sent me with that... Um, the Peruvian skeins. I think this is one of the, the, this, but this is the stroll, which is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon in their worsted weight. So Nitpicks has stroll in worsted and fingering weight. So this is the worsted weight version. It's actually really soft. I don't remember what the dye job was. I don't think I named this. I think I was just throwing random leftover dyes into a pot and seeing what came of it. Um, so this is going to go next. And then when that runs out, I'm going to go to this skein of worsted. This is a knit crate one. Um, I almost never like the patterns that come in knit crate, but this is knitology, knitology worsted probably. Um, let's see, knitology worsted merino in the colorway Kestrel, 100% superwash merino worsted weight, 218 yards. So knit crate names all of their brands. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it to focus on the label and not my face. <laughs> it's hard to read, but Knitology from Knit Crate. A lot of people say Knit Logic, but I'm almost positive that's an E. Oh, it is an E because they actually have it spelled out in the correct typeface. Um, anyway, so that's a Knit Crate yarn from I don't know when. Um, yeah, so. This is a mess now. Um, which way does this go? Nope, this way, this way? Th nope. <laughs> Still have it wrong. So here we go. Uh, that's that's the uh, shawl length of fort. So this will be very long, but not very deep. I'm okay with that. I don't like deep shawls, but I do like long shawls because uh, then I can use it with a shawl pin or I can use uh, a shawl cuff. There's actually... Wait, which way does my finger go? Up here, there's a couple of shawl cuffs from Bertie Parker. I love Bertie Parker. If I haven't told you about Bertie Parker, you will love Bertie Parker. Go and follow her on Instagram. Her jewelry and accessories are incredible. They're very, very beautiful. Um, the other place, I have a shawl pin from a place called Crafty Flutterby, um, or Flutterby. Butterfly Flutterby. Yeah, Crafty Flutterby. Um, her shawl pins are handmade and gorgeous and some of the most um, price-friendly shawl pins I've ever seen. I think mine costs $20 and it is beautiful. Um, if I can find it, I'll try to remember to show it in another video, uh, but it's beautiful. I love it. I believe there's a picture of it on one of my Instagrams somewhere. Um, so yeah, that's the second work in progress. 
third work in progress is the Anzula cowl, which I am designing for Anzula Luxury Fibers. I did show this last week, but I made some progress on it. Um, it's a color work cowl, which is fun. I've only done one color work project before, so this has been really fun. Last time I showed it, I only had a few of these rows with the corrugated stockinette, but um, I have finished the corrugated stockinette on the bottom and done the two additional rows of the uh, just the neutral color above this for the separation. The next thing I need to do is I need to create the color chart and then uh, make sure that I include all of that information in the parts that I'm writing down for this design and continue from there. This is a tweed yarn, and I believe I have one of the ball bands, maybe? Or maybe not. Um, I don't think I have a ball band. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to contact them and find out what yarn I'm using, because I don't have the name of it. But um, it's, it's a really interesting idea. I talked with them when I was at Stitches West in February, and the idea of doing color work with a tweed yarn has kind of, it's, it's an interesting idea because the tweed might take away from the color work, but I think the tweed look here is so subtle most of the time that I don't think it's going to take away from the color work. I think it's going to add a really cool extra element to it. Uh, this is fingering weight. I'm designing this on... Why is this only printed on one side? US 4s, which is a 3.5 millimeter. Uh, this is a 16 inch cable. It's cast on 200 stitches, and then I'll decrease somewhere in the middle down. Uh, I'll be taking 40 stitches out. So that's two, wait, 160. Yeah, uh, it'll go down to 160, which is still wide enough to get around your head comfortably, but tight enough that you can have it up against, like, you can, if you're wearing it under a coat or something, it'll still fit around your neck nicely. So, uh, that's another work in progress. Uh, the interesting part hasn't started yet, so there's not much to show there. And I have one more work in progress, <laughs> which, funny enough, I actually started yesterday. Um, and I told myself I wasn't going to do this because I've been sitting on it for a really long time and I said I need to finish the things I've started. But this pattern has been just, it's been begging me to get started. And I finally started it because I don't have enough yarn to actually do the whole pattern. And so I'm going to use the yarn that I have, do as much of it as I can, and then I'll probably... Well, let me show it to you. This is called Lost Garden. It is an Afghan pattern by Helen Shrimpton. I've done Sacred Space by Helen Shrimpton, and I actually have the Sacred Space, um, a second one uh, on my works in progress, which is from the last episode. So you can check that out. Um, but this is... Another one of her Afghan patterns, it is crochet. I am using loops and threads, cream cotton or co crema cotton. Let's see if it'll focus. And I've got four different colors. Well, actually I bought five different colors, but the pattern only calls for four. So this one is country blue. So there's country blue, navy, light purple, and cream are the four colors I'm using. And this pattern is supposed to evoke like things that you would see in a garden. So you see different flower shapes, like these are daisies right here. And then you've got like just really cool flower shapes. It's just, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. This cotton is wonderfully soft and there's a lot of yarn for these balls. Oh, wait, here, I'll show the unopened one. So this is an unopened ball. This is the gray that I'm not using. And there are 432 yards for this. So that's that's a good amount of yarn. Um, again, I know I'm not going to finish. Like, I'm not going to. I'll probably only get the circular part because there's, there's a part that's circular for a while. And then she squares it off and it becomes a square. 
I might only finish the circular part, but I've seen people take these and put them on like hula hoops or floral hoops and hang them on their walls. And I thought, wouldn't that be a really cool decoration to like put back here for the studio or something? Like I could put the mannequin in front of it. Um, I just, I thought that would be so cool. But this, I started this yesterday and these stitches are not easy. I'm going to tell you right now, like I'm a relatively experienced crocheter. Uh, for the two year, two to three years that I've been doing it, but I've, you know, I've experimented a lot with crocheting and learning new stitches and trying new things because crochet is great for ripping out, which I've done a lot of on this. Uh, but like, there's some really incredible stitches in here. Um, like this center star flower thing, these top V's, they are called front post triple trebles. They are super tall stitches and they're, they're just incredible. And there are places where you have to do nine partial treble crochets and then pull the yarn through 10 loops to create like this peaked thing. Just the way this is constructed is genius. And that's why I love these patterns. That's why I love them because I learned so much about the construction of these designs and how they go together. And I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe. It's beautiful. I'm on row 24, I believe, or 25. So it, it's, it's amazing. I love this pattern. You can probably hear my dogs. Anyway, those are my works in progress for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Finished objects will be up on Tuesday, and uh, some light shop updates will be on Wednesday, and then I do have a Knit Crate video for Thursday, so you can check all of those out this coming week. And thank you so much for joining me. I cannot wait to see you again here on this channel. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and click that bell for notifications so you always know when I upload a new video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you all again very soon. Thanks.